Today we're going to be talking about how the firm foundation is actually Jesus Christ. We're going to be talking about works. And when I started this podcast, I kind of had a different idea as I was praying it through in the morning, but it kind of changed as I did it. And I'm like going, wow, you know, that's pretty awesome. I think you're going to be inspired today. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. I'm always talking about that. Today's no exception. Today we're going to be talking about uh, building a firm foundation Feeding my sheep. I don't know. I got some scriptures. Let's see what happens. Jesus is talking in the Sermon on the Mount, and he says something interesting here. I'm going to read Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Now, keep in mind, he just said, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. Then he says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I think this is going to be a theme, hearing and doing. I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That's the foundation. 725. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell uh, for great, and great was the fall of it. You know, it just reminded me of a meme I put up. You know, James says somewhere, be, be ye uh, doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And, you know, before I started doing this podcast, I kind of had a different goal with it. I'm starting to see something. I believe the Lord's talking about hearing and doing. Now, notice here, Jesus had just said Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, all that stuff that we're supposed to do. You know, and then he says, whoever hears these and does them. There's, what we're doing a lot now is we're doing a lot of hearing. Our brains are like 99% of our Christian body. We're not exercising the, the Christian body. And I talk to Susan about this quite a lot. You know, one of the things that I've noticed that's interesting I've been going over this idea of a calendar. You know, I, I like to get things. I even schedule things of God. You know, that's kind of what I'm, I'm about. I'm about doing the kingdom, and I try to remember to do this, and I, I try to make sure that I do my talk to my people in the testimonies on my direct messages, answer my emails, pray for these people. You know, I have a lot of stuff going on, and I also have to do the mundane and all that. And And we were talking about you know, how we somehow went from the constant fellowship from they daily broke bread, you know, and, and Jesus is saying in the letters to the revelations, repent and go to the first works. Well, one of the first works is we were daily breaking bread in the book of Acts. Uh, they met from house to house. These are one of the things that they were doing that we're not doing now. Now we listen for 30 minutes a week to a monologue, and we call that Christianity, and it's powerless. It has a form of God, but it's, it's, it's not there. There's not much happening. However, God is moving. He's moving right now. I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of prophetic revelation is coming forth right now. A lot of healings that are unusual are happening right now. you just got to be paying attention. And one of the things that's, that's, that's coming to my remembrance right now is in the book of Daniel, it says he shall wear out the saints of the Most High in one of the translations. Um, but that's what's happening. We're worn out. I'm talking about this calendar, and I'm like, going, you know, I'm trying to organize my busy day. And do you realize with the Industrial Revolution, 
you know, like Henry Ford and where people had to start punching time clocks. And then they said, you know, this time is for mammon. You've got to serve mammon between nine and five. Do you realize that something happened there, you know, around the time of the Zeus' Street Revival? You know, before this, they had vocations. A person would be a taxidermist. A person would be a carpenter or a goldsmith or whatever. You know, they have vocations, and basically they did their stuff by what needed to be done. Um, in other words, they, they could plan their day in in. It wasn't just so submitted to mammon. You know, God could be first. And now you can't even witness at the workplace. Have you noticed that? So this industrial revolution, this whole calendar thing that I'm talking about, God needs to be Lord of my calendar. And I, I find it interesting that that now, because of this industrial revolution, we're all stuck into serving this clock, and we're so tired. The devil has worn out the saint. We're worn out, man. We're so tired at the end of the workday. Well, how now we got to fit God in, you know? And God's got a different plan for the saints. He really does. He's he's like, take no thought for the morrow. And I, I know our faith has to rise to this point, but I think it's there in the Scriptures. It's a, it's a treasure hidden in the Scriptures. Well, notice also, when Jesus is talking about Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, when the when the storms come, I mean tragedy, brother. I'm talking about storms. When these storms come, you're going to be good because your house was built upon the solid foundation, the rock of Jesus Christ. Now notice here, people think that this is theology, but... But Paul's talking a little bit about this in the letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians three eleven through 15 is what I'm going to read. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, he's the foundation. It's not pure theology. Jesus is the foundation. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He, we got to abide in the vine. He is our foundation. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work... Abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, I've heard people talk about this and apply it to theology, but the word work there is used several times. Did you notice it? I mean, I could have emphasized it every time. But you'll notice even in the letters to the churches, Jesus isn't saying, hey, you need to have this pure and holy doctrine. He's talking about do the first works. He's talking about the works to all the churches. We need to get back and do the first works. And I've heard people use this precious wood, hay, and stone as like your theology's got to be that pure. And all. No, man, he's talking about works. Even Paul's talking about works. Jesus constantly talks about works in the books of Revelation. I know your works. And he tries the reins of the heart here. This is something that Paul is talking about, and this can also be found in what we were talking about, uh, who hears the words of Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount and does them. They're doing them as a work. Now, we're not saved by works. I know everybody goes to that, but Jesus definitely, our rewards are definitely based on works, okay? Doctrinal purity is not the goal of Christianity. Stephen Barrett said that today to me today on Boxer, and I'm like, going, wow, you know, that's that's right, man. Doctrinal purity it's paralysis of analysis. It keeps us from doing anything, right? Now, here's something else that I wanted to share with you. And I want you to keep in mind that Jesus is our foundation in hearing and doing works. And then here we go into Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden 
these things from the wise and learned. What? He's hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And all of you take up my yoke, learn from me, because I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, rest for yourselves, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a different translation. I'm not sure why I copied that one, but it's close to the King James. Now, notice that there's some weary and burdened people here, and he he talks about the wise and the learned. A lot of us are, are wise and we're learned in our own estimation. But Jesus says, hey, you need to kind of scrap all your theology. This is what I'm getting out of it. I'm probably going a little bit too far. But he's saying... You know, you need to come learn of me. Come to me, Jesus, not your theology. Come to Jesus, and he'll give you rest. There's this peace that surpasses all understanding. And then he says, take my yoke upon you. That means, you know, the yoke of working the field, going out and preaching the gospel to the poor, visiting the widows and orphans in their affliction. You know, all the stuff in red that Jesus tells us to do. The cool thing is, is as we're doing that, We're going to learn from Jesus. He says, learn of me as we have the yoke on. Amen. Now, here's something else about being wise in our own estimation. I wanted to read this to you, see if you could catch this football that I'm throwing here. In John 10, 1, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So I want to tell you something. Somebody that jumps over the fence, they may think they belong in that pen, so they're going to try to catapult themselves into it. It's not their time yet. You know, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But Jesus calls that being a thief and a robber, trying to jump in, you know, jump, catapult yourself up into your authority through the estimation of the wisdom of men, not through the Spirit of God. God will call you up spiritually to do something. But if you try to usurp someone's authority, which is also called sedition, you know, you try to, you know, in in the spiritual realm, I'm not really caring about the blind leading the blind because they're all going to fall into the ditch. But when you're trying to usurp someone's authority, you're trying to jump the fence. And if we're following Jesus, he's going to what? He's going to lead us spiritually to that next step, right? To that next thing. I really kind of wanted to just park that in your spirit because it it leads to this next passage I'm going to read. You know, remember someone's trying to jump the fence and get in and then, but there's only Jesus that's, you know, he goes in and out the gate as he wants and his sheep go in and out of the gate as they follow Jesus. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So John 21, 15. So when he had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, love me more than these. He said to him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto them, feed my lambs. And notice there's something here. Jesus says to Simon three times, if you love me, then you're going to feed my sheep. So Jesus has just through spiritual Authority, you know, has delegated Peter to to feed the sheep. Okay, now there's a component here. If we love Jesus, and there's going to have something to do with feeding sheep, right? And Jesus gave him authority to feed the sheep if he loves them, right? Now, I'm hoping you're catching this because I'm all excited about this revelation. Next, here comes another one. Verily, verily, I say unto you, John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works 
that I do, shall he do also. What? If we believe on Jesus, we're going to do works? What? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whosoever shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now here we go, John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's the stuff in red. <laughs> We're supposed to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe whatsoever Jesus has commanded the original disciples. Okay? If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. Now, you know, I'm always talking about how the Spirit of truth will guide us into all truth. The Spirit of truth will show us things to come. But notice that there's some other components to the Spirit of truth. Jesus is talking about uh, not jumping the fence and trying to eat the sheep or whatever you're wanting to do with the sheep, trying to usurp authority. But we're going to follow Jesus Christ in and out of that gate. And if we love Jesus Christ, we're going to do the works that he says. Amen. We're going to do the stuff in red. And as we're doing the stuff in red, basically what we're doing is we're taking the yoke of Jesus Christ and we're learning of him as we're working the field, and just like he said, it's in multiple places in the Bible. It's just it's just said different ways. As we work the field, we will learn of Jesus, and the Spirit will teach us. Amen? I think it's interesting that the Great Commission is actually co-admission. You know, take my yoke with Jesus. It's me and Jesus. I got one yoke on my neck. He's got, you know, we're working the field together. We're co-laborers with Christ. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know, we're working together. We're working together. There's a spiritual component. Lord, let your will in heaven be done on earth. Well, you know, he's given us spiritual stuff, and we're manifesting it on the earth. Amen? So, as we're thinking today, and we're meditating on stuff, let's think about our foundation Being in Jesus, not some excellent theology. Let's look at let's try to look at what the scriptures say for what they're saying. And uh, you know, a lot of us like try. Man, you know, I used to get angry when people said, "Well, the the sower sows the word." That's about money. (laughs) You know, if it's no, it says the sower sows the word. There are so many things through the Bible. Just reading the Bible and going, wait a minute. What does this really say? And then you see people put spin on it, and you start getting angry. You know, like, man, that's people trying to catapult the fence. God didn't tell them to say that. They took license with the text that wasn't granted to them to interpret by the Spirit. Jesus didn't lead them that way. The spirit of prophecy testifies of Jesus. The spirit of truth will testify of Jesus. And Jesus is the foundation. You know, and like I said, you know, doctrinal purity is not not the goal. And if you if you think that is the goal, the only way you're going to know pure doctrine is by yoking up with Jesus and following the spirit of truth, not through intellectual wrangling or catapulting over the fence into the sheepfold. Anyway, I'm excited. God is doing stuff on the earth right now. He's like got Facebook page updates. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm so excited to hear that God is telling a lot of the same people the same thing at the same time. He's doing unusual miracles. You just got to pay attention. Don't get so busy that you forget God. Now, I, I realize a lot of us are we're in our predicament, so I just want to pray with you right now. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you 
lead us into green pastures. You make us lie down beside the still waters. Lord, I thank you that you have the spirit of peace, Lord. I thank you that we don't have to worry. Worry is like fear and fears of the devil. The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Lord, I thank you that we don't have to take thought for tomorrow. You've got our needs covered. You know our needs. We don't even have to petition them. Just give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that for the promises that you've given us as children that we may have covered up through flesh and, and uh, through mistakes and through sin, and we just kind of forgot about those promises. Lord, I thank you that you're going to resurrect those dreams and those promises that you had for us. And Lord, now we're going to get excited about possessing that promise. We're not going to let it lie dormant. Lord, I thank you that your spirit revives us and excites us to go forth and take ground for Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. I appreciate it. Plus, I love your comments and emails. Uh, My email is conrad at conradrocks.net. Conrad at conradrocks.net. Let me know what you want to hear me podcast about. And maybe I'll do it. (laughs) Amen. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.